What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing some talking about some projects around here and uh, maybe we'll get a little bit of work done too. So let's get to it. The GTO. Let's talk about that first. So I think in the last video I had it in primer. I had fixed some of these little spots and they have to be reprimed now before I can start blocking. I haven't done that yet because it's been really cold and I mean it takes a lot to heat the garage up so I've been kind of waiting for a warm day which for some reason doesn't seem to be coming. So the other thing that I've been doing is working on this front bumper. So I got it pretty smooth you can see. Pretty much got rid of any cracks and imperfections so it's ready to prime now and then once it gets primed which will be at the same time of all these other spots start getting blocked so hopefully we're going to do that this weekend uh, in this video but for today what we're planning on doing is well first we're going to talk about the cobalt uh, some of you guys have, that have watched the video know that uh, my daughter's 2009 cobalt turbo ss had gotten written off a few months ago i ended up taking the car to the uh, insurance adjuster they wrote it off and I bought it back and I'm gonna fix it. So, that's getting you kind of up to speed. I have the car at home, I'm gonna fix it. So the next thing I had to do was take it in for what's called the frame integrity inspection. The frame integrity inspection, which is done by the uh, insurance company, uh, basically they tell you what you have to fix, what's needed to do to fix it before you can proceed. Now, it used to be that you could just take the car, fix it, then get the integrity inspection and it was all good. Now they've made it because of people improperly fixing cars. They've made it so that you have to take the car, get it inspected. But for the most part, you not only have to get it inspected by a body shop, but they have to do the repairs. You're not allowed to do like welding and stuff. You have to be a certified welder, et cetera, et cetera. So I took the car in and it basically turned out that it was gonna be way too much money because I wasn't really allowed to fix a lot of the structural things and welding and all that kind of stuff because I'm not certified, right? So I ended up bringing the car home, came to the conclusion that what I should do with it is find another cobalt and then with a clear title that's never been in an accident, strip it to a bare shell and then just basically transfer everything from the one car to the other. That's what I've done and we're gonna go outside even though it's freezing cold out there and uh, take a quick look at what I bought and then we'll come back in here and we'll talk about exactly what's going to happen. All right, guys, I'm outside. It's freezing. It's been really cold the last few days. Here's the old S10 sitting, just waiting for the weather to get warmer. Okay, so here we go. Here's the new car. So as you can see, it's a red cobalt, very similar to the turbo cobalt. It has a factory sunroof, which is what we wanted. There you go. Uh, the interior is pretty trashed. Apparently, it's uh, the guy who owned its name was Squidgy, and uh, he liked drawing on his car and also uh, smoking, which is disgusting. So, there you can kind of see the car, but it looks like he brushed his teeth because there's a toothbrush back there. So, unless he was doing it, using it for something else, I don't know. So, anyways, overall, this car is pretty decent shape had some front end crack bumper no big deal the biggest thing with it is uh, rocker panels are rusted out as you can see both sides uh, and other than that the body is actually in really nice shape and like I said uh, it has a clear title and it has a sunroof which was kind of the two things that we needed to fix the turbo so here's the turbo if you guys haven't seen it All right, let's go back in the garage where it's warm. All right, Whew. man, it's cold out there. Okay, so pretty much what I'm gonna do with that one is strip it down to a bare shell. I'll kind of maintain whatever I can, like I need to change the radiator because the one on the SS is damaged. I need to change the air conditioning condenser because it's damaged on the SS. So. If I can, if I can leave the whole air conditioning system in, 
then that's one less thing that I have to remove. But I'm planning on removing the complete interior of both, the dash, the, all the body panels are gonna get swapped over. Though it looks like the trunklet is actually in really nice shape, so I probably I'll save the trunklet. So then I ended up getting rocker panels. A friend of mine had ordered some for a cold ball he was fixing. He only ended up using one little section of this one to fix the rear part of his. As you can see, this one goes this much, another 18 inches more than this one. So that's what I'm planning on doing today is I'm gonna see if I can take this sheet metal that I got and if I can uh, pretty much copy this last section here, which also, I mean, you could do this and not buy a rocker panel, but I mean, I need the whole thing. So I got these for a really good deal. That's the driver side, that'll cover the driver side. This covers most of the passenger side, except for this section, 18 inch section that goes on the back, which I guess is actually down there, not up here. So that's what we're gonna try to do this afternoon is make that. Uh, I also picked up a new center console for the Jimmy. And uh, if you had watched the video where I restored the one that was in there, it was pretty busted up and had a bunch of cracks in it where this one is actually really nice. No damage, no cracks anywhere. The reason I actually bought it is because it had the GMC emblem on it, which uh, mine had a Chevrolet emblem. If I can find it right here. So there you see that emblem and that's why I bought it. But then once I got it home, I realized this one's actually really, really nice shape. The only issue is it has lots of paint on it. What I really like to do with it is strip the paint without damaging the, uh, if you can see here, there's kind of like a um, texture to it, sort of, all over. Definitely on the lid, I'd like to try to preserve the texture. So I've been trying to find some paint stripper that will strip plastic without damaging it, which most of the strippers I've looked at won't. Some people say you can use brake fluid. Brake fluid will eat the paint away without the plastic. So we might give that a try, maybe put a little in a spot, see how that works. But uh, let's try to make this rocker pound. I guess I'll give you a little update on the Nova 2 before we start. Uh, I haven't touched it. It's been sitting here covered up, as you can see. It's, uh, there it is. But I did order a Sonic straight cut gear set for it, which I need to pull the transmission out. So that's gonna happen soon. I also wanna buy a torque converter. So I'm gonna contact PTC soon, order a torque converter for it so that uh, come springtime, we can get out there. Uh, there's also a new uh, drag strip that's supposed to be opening this year closer to the city. Uh, it's gonna be an eighth mile, no time kind of grudge race, street racing kind of track. So we'll have to uh, see what happens there. Hopefully that's gonna be cool because then we'll have quarter mile track to go to plus this eighth mile track, which we can go to once in a while, which will be fun, kind of street race style. So I gotta get my car ready for that. So that's coming up. And I think around here, that's pretty much it. I ordered some parts for the GTO that are coming in uh, next week. And when I get those parts, you guys will see them. And yeah, so let's get to work on this rocker panel. All right, so what I'm gonna do first, you can see how much longer this one is than this one. So I'll just take a measurement, see how much difference it is. We're like 17 and a half inches longer, okay? Then, put this one aside. Then what I gotta do is take the tape measure and kind of measure how long it is. So it's about seven and a half inches with the bends, like this. So then, I'm gonna transfer it, transfer it over to this sheet metal, which I already did. You probably can't see it, but I made a mark here and here. And then I'm gonna cut that out and then we're gonna have to bend it. Now, I wish I had a metal brake because that would make this a lot easier, but we're gonna have to figure something else out, which I've done in the past. Some rectangular tubing that I had in the vise will uh, be sufficient to bend this stuff. So it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I think this metal that I got here is actually slightly thicker than this, which isn't a huge deal as long as I can bend it okay. I mean, I could just go buy another rocker. They're like 60, 70 bucks. But I paid 50 for both of these. So if I can make this one using a little bit of the sheet metal, 
I'll be way further ahead. So yeah, let's uh, we'll cut that out and then uh, we'll get to bending. I'm just gonna cut this with the cutoff wheel. Be easier. our piece now we're gonna have to start bending it okay so what I'm doing here now is I kind of make my own kind of ghetto uh, metal break which will work in this configuration will work perfect for the first bend which will be that smaller bend but then the second bend I'll have to do something different or maybe put it over here more so that it can slip through but I think this should work pretty good to uh, bend the metal so I'll get it set up I did a measurement and it's just about three quarters so if I go three quarters and that's where the bend is then it should be pretty much right on. I'd rather have the nice even side up on the top so let's go like this so this is actually a bit fatter down here because you can see I cut it kind of goofy but that's okay and get it in there clamp it good and I mean you could even put a clamp like this, you know, to make sure that it's clamped down good if you want. I mean, this is a good way to make anything out of metal, let alone a rocker panel. I mean, anything you got to put a bend in. So the only thing that kind of sucks is this metal is a little thicker than normal, like car sheet metal. So it might be a little harder to bend. I should get gloves. I actually came up with the idea that maybe I would heat the metal a little bit. I mean, this isn't a oxyacetylene torch, but it can't hurt. If we just get the metal hot, if this was thinner sheet metal, it would bend super easy, but I'm just a little worried about bending this metal because it's a little on the thicker side. You guys tell me if I'm wasting my time. Comment below. Am I an idiot for heating this metal up? I possibly might be, I don't know. Also, if you're watching this video, of course, you're hearing this. Comment below. Do you like these kind of videos? I mean, I know it's not fixing up a Lamborghini, you know, but, uh, and by these videos, I mean like fixing this cobalt. I mean, I have to do it so I can film it or I cannot film it. You guys can tell, let me know. I know the last video, it didn't get a ton of views, which is fine. People aren't interested, but uh, it's just one of those things I have to do. Just like the GTO, I know it's not as interesting block sanding and things, but, uh, it's got to get done, so. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we'll take it out of here and we'll see how it matches up. Clamped it to the rocker. So you can see it's nice and tight there and nice and tight on the edge. So I think that's pretty good. It's a little longer here, which like I said, I kind of made it longer because of, uh, because it wasn't cut quite straight. So now what we got to do is just figure out this bend here, the next bend, which obviously is a way more gradual bend this is a very sharp 90 this is just kind of a sloping bend but there's also kind of a curve to it so i'll kind of have to bend it into a little bit of a curve and hopefully it'll be good and then we can weld the two pieces together and that'll be ready to go on the car once uh, i get it in here all right so now i got it set up in the vise for the next bend i said i don't know i mean i'm sure it can't hurt to heat it up a little bit even though obviously we're not getting it red hot we're still heating it, so. And then, like I said, this bend isn't going to be so much of a bend. And then we'll have to probably move it up and kind of curve it a little bit. Vice is turning. 
working. It's kind of need to compare it to the other one. Pretty close. Might even be, I might even have went too much. Okay, I definitely went too far, which is crazy because I didn't think I did, but, and then like I said, I, I have to come back some, and then I have to try to curve that piece. Like I said, I should have went and bought the thinner metal because it would have been way easier to do this. Yeah, see that's pretty good right there. Just it needs to be curved a little bit. I don't want to put a actual like bend in it. I just want to curve it a little bit. Well, I put a curve in it, kind of a little more maybe bend than I want it. Oh no, maybe not. Thing is that the SS's have a lower skirt on them, so this is never going to be seen anyways. But I still want to get it, you know. Close. I don't know why this bike should hold it from turning. Well, I guess I should probably. In, I was actually looking at metal brakes to buy a smaller one. Probably something I should look into. What we need is we need this to overlap. Oh. So there you go. I'm pretty close now. It looks like I need to flatten this out a little bit, maybe. And then I think this is pretty close. Yeah, if I had an English wheel, I could put this in the English wheel and probably take some of this, you know, curve out of it or whatever, but I don't, so I'll have to do it the old fashioned way. I got it on this anvil, plus if you ever need to drop it on Wiley e. Coyote's head, that's good to have one. So I'm just going to take it, plus I also dented it up a bit when I was bending the first bend, which like I said, you won't see any of this. Oh, oh. I just about dropped the anvil on my foot. Now, oh yeah. Let's take vice grips and we can compare. I mean, you could do this if you're making a rocker for a car and the part of the rocker was still good, you could be doing this or if you cut off the old one and there was enough left to kind of uh, get a model from, I'd say that's pretty much it. Maybe take a little bit of this dent out. Like I said, if I had an English wheel, but I can even use the vise maybe to just slightly squeeze it. But I think for the most part, that's pretty much right on. If you ask me see how it's pretty much the same even up there all your curves and it pretty much looks like a rocker panel piece if i had a big metal brake i mean you could easily make these the whole thing without buying them if you had a big enough piece of sheet metal but yeah that's gonna work out awesome all right so i got it fit together oh, of course now it's kind of not fit but uh i think that's pretty good and as you can see it's pretty much the same all the way down and what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld it from the back side straight the whole thing and then I won't grind that down I'll leave that so that it'll be strong and then maybe I'll flip it over and I'll actually weld the front side too and that'll get ground down and then it'll be all one piece again the gap and that isn't that bad it was the vice grips were kind of pushing it apart so I'm going to hold it just with my hand once I get my glove on I don't burn my hand off, just give it a tack weld. I think I need to grind just a little bit of right there down a little bit. Yeah, see now that I now that I lined it up, this is pretty good here. This isn't as big of a gap like I thought it was.
So I'll finish welding this up and then we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so as you can see, I welded this whole side and then actually I turn it over. You can see it actually penetrated all the way through. So I probably don't need to uh, weld that side and it'll just get a little bit of body filler. I'll grind it down and then uh, we'll take a look at it and compare it to the one that's not been cut up. So there's both rockers now. This one actually ended up, I made it a little on the long side, but that's okay. So yeah, now they look uh, pretty much the same again. You can compare them there. The two pieces. Looks pretty much uh, what it's supposed to look like. I mean, we'll see when we put it on the car, but for the most part, it's pretty good. So that's definitely an easy way to make uh, rocker patch panels, fender patch panels, any kind of thing like that that you need to make that maybe even you can't get them. Maybe the car you're working on, you can't order those pieces anymore or, you know, cause it's old or cause it's too new. You know, a lot of newer cars, they don't even make patch panels of certain kinds for them. It's a good way to make, uh, make a rocker patch panel or any kind of patch panel for that matter. But uh, yeah, I think we'll continue this later. On second thought guys, I took a look at the clips and this looks like it's gonna be pretty long already. So I think we're gonna end the video here. And if we work out here tomorrow, we'll start a new one. So like always, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. Make sure you click the notification bell so that you get notified of all the new videos coming out. And we'll check you later.